What the Tech is sponsored by Audible.com, the internet's leading provider of audiobooks, with more than 100,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature. For a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash Andrew. And by Stitcher Radio. Listen on the go via the Stitcher mobile app. For more information, go to stitcher.com slash GFQ. Hey everybody, welcome to What The Tech, I'm Andrew Zarian, and today you're watching us live, we're broadcasting at a uh, special time, we're broadcasting at 2pm East on this uh, beautiful Tuesday afternoon. I'm joined by Paul Therat, as I am each and every week. How you doing, Paul? <laughs> I doing good. Well, I feel like this is the second week in a row I've, I've shown up completely exhausted to this podcast. Well, last week you were pretty okay. Uh, it's pretty okay. You were pretty okay until about like 45 minutes in. Yeah. And I think you just totally crashed at that point, but I don't blame you. You had it's a rough week. You, it's me. It's not you. You had a crazy couple of weeks, but now you're home. You're done, right? Yes. I, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Although, you know what? Um, I can't tell the full story on this one yet, but I was invited to go to Dubai. Wow. Really? And I initially accepted, but I had to do a... Um, a quick renew of my passport because it was going to exp uh, expire this month. And I went into Boston a couple of days in order to get that done. By the way, the United States government can turn around a passport in 24 hours if you need that to happen. But then um, over the weekend, you know, my kids kind of freaked out because I've been gone for so long. And the more I thought about it, I thought, you know, this isn't critical. So I'm actually now not going to go. <laughs> so it just seemed like such a stupid thing to do. My One of my closest friends just came back from Dubai. She... Um her one of our other friends is uh, very wealthy, and she, mm -hmm. he took a bunch of his friends to Dubai. Okay. I, I was not one of those friends, so what does that say? And well, you did miss out on a fourteen-hour flight. I did miss out on the fourteen-hour flight. They took Qatar uh, Air, and it, they said it was amazing. Yep. And they all went there very excited to go, and they all came back saying it's just a very expensive Vegas. Yeah. So that's right. all so, it. I mean, there's no there's no history to the country. Because yeah. the country was founded in, in the 1960s. It's literally 78 minutes old, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it literally is. And and I yeah. said that to someone. I said that on the air once. And someone goes, what do you mean? And I'm like, the country really didn't get developed until the 1960s. It was just sand. That's all it was. Yeah, there was a, like, a little seaport there that, you know, had little wooden boats sitting in it about two years ago. So, yeah, I mean, I just went to New Zealand, which is a place I, I would love to spend time in. And that was a grueling flight that killed me for a couple of weeks. And... You know, going to a place that is like a big, shiny, gold version of Vegas, um, uh, you know, uh, is not a huge <laughs> draw, you know? Yeah, it, he, so. they, they described it as, um, in Vegas, you could at least go and like buy like a I Love Vegas shirt and bring it to like a relative. You can't even do that there because it's like $100 for the shirt. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I would do it just to do it, uh, which is my initial reaction. But anyway. I'm going to be home for a little while. I well, that's before. good. You're home. So no interruptions. You're in high definition. You're in the uh, Paul Therott compound. It's all coming up, Paul, baby. Uh, and, and what a time to be home uh, it, <laughs> it, because there is some craziness happening on the Microsoft side. Oh, what happened? I, I don't know. You tell us. Uh, some guy left. <laughs> yeah. I heard some else. guy that that's really not important at all to the, to the company <laughs> or the way that Windows 8 was was released or anything yeah. to do with Windows uh, has left the company. I don't understand this big deal. Yeah, so we should just move on to the next thing. Um, I don't even know his name. S let's just pretend, let's just pretend it? it never happened. I think that's the best approach. So uh, he's he's out. He's done. And there's a lot of rumors on why he left. Yes, there are. Um a lot of it, uh, I read it on The Verge, and, and you know, it's all rumors and it's all hearsay at this point, but maybe you could um, chime in on this. They said he was he was very much against, uh, for putting people against each other and yep. separating teams and separating people and uh, it divisive kind of... Divisive is the word you're looking divisive, for. Divisive, there you go. And yep. the the they had made up, Microsoft had decided that it was possibly time for him to move on, but they ke but they kept him because he's so good at what he does. Is that true? 
Um, I don't know about upper management's feelings about him. I, I, I know a lot about him, and I know a lot about what he's done to people both inside and outside of Microsoft. And so I can tell you that from the perspective of him being kind of a bad guy and being very hurtful and harmful to the people around him, uh, getting rid of him was a very good thing. Um, I think the way to put it is, just speaking of Microsoft specifically, there were a lot of really good people in the Windows division that were forced out because they weren't his guys. Yeah. Um, there were people who moved to other parts of Microsoft because of him, and there were many people who, frankly, just left the company. Well, the company. He, he was, he was I mean, the main driving force behind this move for Microsoft, for Windows, right? For the whole yep. Metro idea. Yep. He was very much behind that. Right. So here's the thing. And I... I um, Mary Jo Foley and I will have a, a, a kind of a deeper conversation about the politics of this on Windows Weekly because she knows a lot more about the, you know, the people at Microsoft and how they uh, have uh, relationships with each other and all that kind of stuff. I, I can tell you from the technical side that there was a group at Microsoft who had gone to the Windows team years ago and said, we have ideas for how Windows can evolve and here they are. And uh, Snofsky told, basically told them to go screw themselves yeah. and that the product they were talking about, which could have been Windows, became Windows Phone based on Silverlight, uh, the first Metro UI and so forth. And that what Sanofsky decided to do was start over from scratch with virtually everything, by the way, the APIs, you know, the runtime, everything, to start over from scratch, not build it on Silverlight, just start from scratch. And, and so he did it, and congratulations, and you get this platform that's, you know, Metro, and it's sort of like Windows Phone, but, you know, the APIs are not exactly the same, and they are 1.0 APIs. They're, they have start yeah. over from scratch. So even though he has positioned them for the future, which is a good thing, he's also set them back a couple of years because they could have had this stuff years ago. But he had an aversion, has an aversion, to anything that wasn't invented by his own team. And so instead of taking technology from around the country, uh, com I keep saying country, company and integrating it into Windows, he demanded that they do their own thing. And I actually think that the net result was that he set them back. Well, yeah, because it, it, they had to start from scratch and they had to do it his way. And, and they kind of had these ideas placed prior. But what happens to the future of, of Windows at this point? Because this yeah. was his vision. Sure. And now that he's out, I'm yeah. sure there are many people that, that are possibly wanting to revert back to what their idea was. I, it, now, it all depends on the it's success. No going back. <laughs> it's no going back. No, there isn't. It's no but, going back. But it anyone who thinks that Windows 8 is a one and done and... You know, we're going to go back. I mean, I, that is fanciful. I, I Part of me would kind of enjoy it, but I just don't see that happening. Going back to what? Going back to... Well, in other words, here, here's an I mean, what can they go back to at this point? I don't think they could go back to... Here, here's what would have been a great Windows release, uh, Windows 8 release. Windows 8 minus Metro. Okay. Right? If you look at just the stuff that's desktop oriented, it's great. storage spaces, file issues, awesome. It's awesome. It, it, and I'll tell you, I, it looks. I I I have a whole story about it, and we'll get to it after this. But yeah, I install but, Windows. I install Windows, and I spent a couple hours with it. I had to go back to seven for some driver, <laughs> some bizarre driver yeah, issues yeah. I was having, uh, and it was so specific to what I needed to do. I, I I'm not holding it against it, but sure. desktop looks a lot better. Yeah, and it actually it, it actually it. makes Windows Seven look dated. Exactly, and so just the desktop part of Windows Eight would have been a bigger upgrade over Windows Seven than Windows Seven was to Windows Vista. It would have been that would have been great. Now, yeah. that doesn't position them for the future, of course. I mean, eventually, you know, the the market for Windows PCs, like traditional PCs, I think everyone understands is flatlining, right? Which doesn't mean it's going away. It just means that growth is slowing to a crawl. May, in fact, contract. It's still a market of hundreds of millions of units, but it's not the future. And so the alternative future would have been to take Windows Phone and turn that into a tablet. And if you look at the Windows 8 tablets that are out in the world today, or the Windows RT tablets, and you imagine those running basically a system that's almost identical looking to what they have today, but running the sort of the Windows Phone variant on the underside. Yeah, I mean, uh, technically, if you, if you look at it, Microsoft is running three separate products at the same time. They have Windows Phone, they have Windows RT, and then we have the regular Windows. Yeah, and there's, obviously there's overlap there, big overlap between RT and w Windows 8 in particular. But, sure. um, you know, I, the important bit, though, is they, they've redone the back end in a big way. And, you know, there are obviously pluses and minuses to that. But, you know, from a user experience standpoint, I, get I have these Windows 8, I'm saying Windows 8 phones, I have these Windows Phone 8 handsets. 
And Windows Phone is awesome. It's always been awesome. And this new version is the most awesome version yet. And I have the same reaction I always have when I use these devices. And you're talking, I mean, you're going from hardware and software. That I mean, yeah. right now, the products that we've seen from HTC and from Nokia, hardware and software are well-matched and they're beautiful. And I think to myself, this thing would have been an awesome tablet. I still think yeah. that. I, I, I can't escape from that. Now, the problem is this. Everything I've just said is a fantasy. That's never going to happen. I think we need to just sort of accept the fact. I don't want to say we're stuck with it, but I mean, but Windows 8 is what it is. Uh, I, I, I think the only way you step back from this cliff is possibly someone a little saner could come in and say, we're going to offer a version for businesses that doesn't have this Metro crap in it or something. And I think some people would really like that um, and not be as uh, hard-headed about it, you know, not uh, force this kind of thing down people's throats, which is unfortunately what has happened. So uh, let me ask you this, Paul, uh, because I've spent some time with it, but uh, obviously uh, not full use. You know, I'm not using it every day. I'm hoping to do it because I'm trying to find a computer that I could use it and get the entire experience rather than uh, just installing it on an older machine or something that shouldn't be, you know, for Windows 8. But mm. every setting, uh, there are settings in desktop that are not there in Metro. Is every Metro setting in desktop that they could <laughs> easily say, okay, you know what, we're adding yeah, yeah. a version that you could just flip off Metro and now you're on desktop? So it's not that clean. Um, it would be nice if I could say that all of those Metro control panel type settings and PC settings only applied to Metro, but it, it's, a, it's not really the case. They actually did replace some of the old desktop control panel interfaces with new Metro style PC settings. And so it's just not, it's not, you know, it, this thing was engineered much as earlier versions of Windows were engineered to commingle IE and Windows. This version was designed to commingle these two things to make it hard mm -hmm. for them to be removed. It may be impossible. And that's what I mean. I, th there's no way that Windows 8 is this one time deal, right? They're not going to do that to developers. It's just not going to happen. And so we've taken this step past the traditional .NET past and past Silverlight and WPF, and we've moved on to this WinRT thing. I, I think WinRT and the desktop continue to evolve i think the only question is how and at, at what pace but yeah I, and how it how it evolves is is the biggest question at what pace is is the second biggest question because yeah. i would love for microsoft to say okay you know what every quarter we're going to release a major patch or major update to this and uh, we're listening to your complaints we're going to mm. add features that you guys want we're going to take away features that are not necessary but you know at this point how do, do we know if they're going to do that we don't know we don't no, know when way. Apple does, and, and the same part from Apple's camp. We don't know when they're going to release updates. They could be they could be a, a major <laughs> security flaw on Apple side, and yeah. they want to release yeah. it for six months because they it, they want to do a bulk update. They don't want to do incremental updates. Right. I mean, so obviously Apple has their own questions. Uh, they've gotten rid of Scott Forstall. I, we all suspect, and I think it's reasonable to expect that they're going to step back from the. Uh, skeuomorphic designs of the past and and move to something cleaner and nicer and we'll see you know we'll see what that looks and, like. And by the way, guys, um, when I when I installed uh, to kind of step back, I installed Windows 8 on one of my Skype machines uh, over the week, mm -hmm. over the last week, and I don't know why I did it. I, I had some bizarre reason, and y you know what it was? I wanted to see if Direct Show is operating differently than it does on Windows 7. Now, it's a very bizarre, specific thing I need to test out, but I installed it for that. I didn't notice any difference. I didn't notice any performance differences either, but I had a major problem with one of our softwares that we used to broadcast with. It would not work with my sound card, my onboard sound card. It would not see it. Windows would see it, but the software would not. So I had to uninstall it. But there are ways to only stay in desktop. There's a there's a program, and I know Paul hates these start menu programs, but it adds a start menu, and you also oh, tell it to put you. you into desktop every time you start the computer. When I installed that for, for the, about the five hours that I was using it, I did not see Metro at all. So you can do it, but Microsoft isn't telling you. You know, Microsoft isn't the one telling you, hey, listen, you can add the start menu. They're not, right. I mean, they're they're not making it easy, obviously. 
So I don't know, you know, it, how how is this going to impact Microsoft? How is this going to impact uh, Windows 8? We don't know yet. Well, I, we can we can guess at a few things, right? Because, Steve, you know, Steve Baum, I should go look at what he said, to be honest, because he said some very specific things that I think were interesting. He, he alluded to the fact that this guy doesn't work well with others, one thing, which I thought was interesting. And he talked about the pace of change as well. He said... Let me see if I, it's he said um, Sanofsky so, had a reputation as a brilliant yet controversial leader. Well, I, actually, I don't think he said that. Uh, uh, I think this is a quote from Microsoft. Steve Ballmer, meanwhile, said, I'm grateful for many years of work. And uh, uh, Sanofsky, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. The quote is uh, right there. I didn't see it. Yeah, no, I don't think he would say yeah. that. But, you know, he talked about, um, oh, boy. Yeah, it's going to be hard to find. But basically, the deal was simply that there can be more integration and faster movement going forward, which That's are kind of implicit digs at this guy, you know, yeah. that uh, he is acknowledging the fact that there was no integration, which there wasn't. I mean, that's very easily explained and, and understood. And that this guy, the, the, the speed is very interesting. You know, Stephen Stanofsky had said many, many times, you know, three years was a good amount of time for Windows releases. And then he hinted at the end of the development of Windows 8 that, things were going to move a little more quickly. And there's been a lot of talk around this, you know, Project Blue and how maybe Microsoft is going to update Windows 8 uh, on a pattern that is similar to, um, say, Office 365 or yeah. even Visual Studio. Well, they kind of have to with this release, especially because this is a, you know, this is a, a 1.0 release of, of Windows. Yeah. So they kind of have to move much quicker than, you know, putting it out there for three years and letting it sit and saying, okay, you know what? You guys hated this, but here's something better. I, I right. think that's and, and that's the nature of products at this point. I, I don't think you could sit on an operating system for four years. Uh, you know, people have compared Windows 8 to Windows Vista, and I, I don't feel that's fair on so many levels. And you know, we've talked a lot about how Vista wasn't as bad as so many people assume it was, and so forth. But well, that's um, because that's because Microsoft has that weird stigma that every other release is the one that you want. <laughs> sure. You don't want this one. It's you got to wait for the next one. Yeah. So I, I guess, but. The, the thing I would say to that is that there is one major area area where Windows Vista and Windows 8 are very similar, and that is this. It's not hard to look at those releases of Windows and say, here's how we fix it. You know, here's the areas where this thing falls apart. This is what we need to fix. It's very straightforward. And so I, I think the I think the thing I wish they had announced, I mean, obviously it's huge news that Sanofsky's leaving and all that stuff, but really the big deal to me is now what? You know, yeah. I'm worried more about an implementation sort of thing. I mean, I don't really care ultimately who's running the show other than the fact that this guy actually personally and professionally affected me in a very negative way. But that I want to know how Windows is going to be updated going forward. I want this to be more seamless than it's been in the past. Um, he had kind of a, a childish, almost psychotic uh, relationship with people and... You were kind of in or you were out, you know, with him. And uh, when you were in, you were really in, and it was that was weird. And when you were out, there was no warning. You were just out, you know. Yeah. And Microsoft refers to this as the, you know, the penalty box or whatever. But um, I'll, I'll tell you one story. I guess I'll tell you one story. And um, oh, goody! I mean, I am hearing the weirdest noises outside. I'm hearing like ice cream truck <laughs> chimes, and I don't know what this is. Like. It's like someone is playing like a. It's probably Sanofsky standing on my yard, my yard in a minstrel outfit or something. <laughs> All right. So some months ago, um, Microsoft announced one day that in, in, at the end of a very huge blog post that wasn't written by Stephen Sanofsky, it was written by Jensen Harris, a person I, I still con uh, consider to be a friend, that uh, right at the end of a post that had nothing to do with this, oh, and by the way, we're changing the arrow UI, and here's what it's going to look like, you know. And I kind of wigged out on that. I got very upset about that for reasons that are actually a little more complex than people may appreciate. But I'll, the short version is simply that these people knew I was writing a book, and I was assured very early on that the safest thing for me to write about up front would be the desktop, and that, yes, I could submit all those screenshots, not to worry about that. And when I did, they announced that they were changing the UI for all that stuff, and I'd have to do all that stuff over again. They never warned me that this was coming. They never mentioned it. You know, they, they reacted with shock that this would have bothered me. But let, let me and, let me let me just chime in here. You're writing a book on yeah. the product that they're trying to convince people to buy. Yeah. Now you may you may think that Microsoft, <laughs> at the very least, would 
want to help me a little bit. I don't know. I mean, that's just a crazy that. idea. I can assure you that that was never the case. They didn't help me in the slightest. They were horrible. In fact, Are they, they like that with everybody? I have no idea. Or do you think you just pissed them off in some bizarre way? I don't know. I, 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 all I can tell you is that you can go back and look at every single article I've written about Windows 8 this year, and one pattern emerges, and that is this. I help people understand Windows 8. That's what I've done. All I've done is document all the new features, all the changes. That, that's what I've done. And so, you know, every once in a while, I, I, something like this happens. I write something critical, and they don't like it. And they react in a very uh, immature and childish fashion. And they did. And they got very upset with me. And so, okay, whatever. I don't care. I don't work for Microsoft. That's not my problem. I'm sorry. But I, here's my opinion. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. Um, so that was in May. And so in July, uh, the funny thing is the July incident, I don't even remember what it was, but it was innocuous. It was nothing like what I just described. But something else happened. And I got a little ping from their PR people. And they said, hey, you know, just a little heads up, Paul. Um, you're ruffling some feathers over there. And I, you know, I don't want to tell you what to do, but if you want to be part of this stuff going forward, you're going to have to be careful. You know, I got, I got a warning from them. Huh. And I said, I, okay. Do you <laughs> well, know what, what you had said? I, yeah, no, I don't remember. It does, okay. um, what I can tell you is that it was so I've written something, you know, who knows. I wrote back and I said, I just, I just want to be clear about a couple of things. Um, first of all, I, I don't work for you, so I don't know what that means. Yeah. And um, this is not a big deal, so I'm not even sure why you're upset about this. And then what came back was, well, after that thing that you wrote about the arrow changeover, uh, people are a little sensitive now, and they're watching you, and they're, you know, they're not happy with this. I, th I, said, wait, I said, the arrow thing. <laughs> so I went back and I looked. And this is what's interesting about this. I, I looked. Just on the super site for Windows, I went back and I counted. How many articles had I published on the super site for Windows? Not counting the Windows IT Pro stuff. Just the super site for Windows. About Windows 8. Between that article and the one that they were now complaining about, and it was 50. Wow. I had, I had written 50 articles. Every single one of them, every single one was informative, was a description of a feature, was a tip. It was something about how you could either learn more about Windows 8 or uh, just understand it better. You know, that, that, that's what it was. And so my response to this was, let me get this straight. Over the span of 52 articles, over two months, I wrote something negative back in May. I wrote 50 informative articles, and then I wrote something negative today. And all you've gotten back to me on are the two negative ones. I don't expect like a phone call, like, hey, Paul, thanks for the article. That was great. You wrote a really nice article about Windows 8, because I never get those calls or emails. But never once did I hear anything positive about anything. Not that I would expect that. But every time I, or I, there's anything even slightly negative, I actually hear about it. So I was warned. I was warned in July that I was on the edge. But I mean, they 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 have to have some sort of understanding that you are but not I don't, in order I do to be not work for them. But I mean, in order so, to be respected as a journalist, you yeah. can't just I mean, just gush over them in every possible way. You have to kind of say this was know, the in, most insane interaction I've ever had with a PR company in my life. <laughs> Maybe I misunderstand the PR, the point of PR. Maybe I don't get it. I don't know. You want to hear something uh, funny? I, I work with someone and they, uh, they pay PR for me, and she would do these seminars for restaurants and how they could improve their reputation online. And they would tell them, if you're going to make a fake Yelp review, write something bad about your store or your restaurant. Interesting. Because it makes it more credible yeah, yeah, that yeah. you're saying, okay, you know what? The cal calamari I, okay, was no, amazing. No, look, look I'm, I'm, <laughs> that's interesting. I am not involved in any plots. But again, you're not involved well, I in am, I am just, telling, you know, whatever I'm writing, it's this is where I'm at. I mean, I, the thing that kills me, this, as an aside, as part of all this, during the same two-month time period, these guys were going to help us, you know, we were going to get builds, we were going to be all set, they were going to hook us up. They didn't do jack shit for us. Um, Raphael first and me separately, we both actually got approached by people at Microsoft on the side who said, we have seen internally that we are not to work with you people, that we are not to help you, that we are, in fact, not helping you. That's unreal. And these people both said separately, this is wrong. This is insane. We're going to help you. And they started giving us builds so that we could get the book done. They started doing for us what the official people could not and would not do for us, which was help us. Um, Were they it, like this with Windows 7? I don't, you know what? I, all I can say is that it has been an escalation of insanity okay. since this guy took over. And so, yes, I think there was stuff like this with Windows 7. I'm saying now it has gotten worse over time. It has gotten insane. Now, to be clear, 
I am nobody. I mean, I am absolutely nobody. I wouldn't say that, Paul. I, I know I am nobody, but I honestly, in the world of Windows and, and you know, like and so forth. I mean, it seems like if you were going to help anybody, or at least be ambivalent about somebody and not uh, actually go after them, you know, I'd be that guy. <laughs> you know, it seems yeah. like I'd be that guy. But but the bigger issue here, I think, is I think that this behavior. I know, in fact, I, I'm sorry. I know that this behavior because I have so many stories, so many I can't tell. So many stories I've heard from people at Microsoft, very high up at Microsoft, who have run into this guy, run afoul of this guy, argued with this guy, lost in, internal battles to this guy, that this is how they treat people. And this is how this guy treated people inside of Microsoft, inside of his own division, at other parts of Microsoft. I've watched them ho hobble the server team and, and turn it into this awful subservient group that has to do everything that the client team demands, even though, by the way, that division now makes more money than they do. I have. I will never understand what Microsoft allowed to happen under this guy's insane rule. But all I can tell you now is that it's over. And all those people out in the world who think that this guy did a great job and they're, oh, I thought he was going to be CEO, have no idea. Yeah, have no idea what this guy was about. What, what he was do we a bad? He was a bad guy. Now, what do and, we know about the person that's going to take over his position? Well, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Um, she is his first lieutenant, his closest lieutenant. Yeah. And, um, I, I have a suspicion and this, uh, I've heard this too, is that, you know, uh, from a transition perspective, you kind of, you know, just, uh, you, you exhibit calm and you move along and this is the, you know, the next person I, I don't, I've heard from many people now that, um, she's not that visionary engineer type that, you yeah. know, they need someone to, um, have a vision for Windows going forward, and that she isn't necessarily that person. And so we'll see. She seems nice to me. I mean, I you know I don't actually know her, so I can't really say. But the thing is, she was second in charge to Sanofsky. Yeah. So, um, but I've you know I like I said I I have friends in the Windows division, and I've watched some of them kind of sub succumb to this insanity, and I have strained relations with some of them as a result, and I've watched others simply move on because they couldn't take it inside of there, and so. I suspect what's going to happen is that Microsoft will eventually announce a president of the Windows division that will not be Julie Larson Green or Tammy Reller. That will be someone else. Uh, and at that point, maybe they... Uh, interesting uh, question in the chat room. Jimbo says, uh, is a visionary really needed? The vision has been put in place. They just need to make it better. No, the visionary is needed because yeah. this vision that's been put in place isn't necessarily the right vision. Yeah. And, you know, look, I, they're not going back. I, I just can't see that happen. That would be crazy. But someone needs to come in and look at what they have, look at what the plan was, and actually see if that does make sense, you know, and, and see how they can maybe move it in a slightly different direction if that's required so that they are... Um, set up for the future in a way that maybe they aren't right now. And so we'll yeah. see. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting time. Uh, and ha ha they've... I, I By believe, the way, I just want to be clear. This yeah. story I just told, one story. I one, have many stories. One of like many. This. I have many stories like this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think when people... If people were to look back, it's, I can only talk about myself in a way here because... Well, because, you know, that's really the only thing I should be talking about. Um, but I this support, has gone on... I, I support Windows users... These, the, the, the insane bullshit that I've had to put up with is it makes no sense. I love this product, I, and I feel very strongly about helping the people that use it. And you'd think there'd be something from someone where someone would, you know, at the very least not bother me. You know, you think that would be it. You but, think that you would know, be the but, worst but, it could be, ambivalence. But, Mike, but Apple know? is not super friendly either. I don't deal with Apple. I don't know. I don't, that does I don't care. I mean, from what I've heard, I, I wonder if this is just a new, new way of conducting, you know, the corporate structure of things and the, uh, and uh, the PR really doesn't want uh, to okay, support. I, maybe, you know, I mean, I don't I, know. I, I, it's just, bizarre to me. You, you know, there are so many uh, directions I could take this, but I mean, uh, I, I'm reminded of the notion of the surface RT and the many things it doesn't have. One of the things it doesn't have is, uh, broadband in internet, uh, cellular broadband as an option. A lot of people will say, "Oh, we don't need that." You know, we have that in a, we have that in our phones. We have that in our whatever. 
you know, Steven Sanofsky can come out and say our telemetry, which he loves, shows that only 30% of users even buy those machines and then only some percentage of them ever use it and so forth. And that's nice. But leadership is not about doing what other companies do. It's not about emulating what other people do. It's not following telemetry. It's doing the right thing. It's leading. You know, maybe the reason so few people use it is because it's never been done right. Or, yeah. you know, look at it from a different perspective. Don't use that as an excuse. Lead. And that's not leading. So if you want to emulate Apple, if you want to be exactly like Apple, you by definition are not leading. And you are not Steve Jobs. Yeah. So you can't do that. That was his, I mean, in, in a weird way, that was his gimmick. Yeah, that he he's was not this, Steve Jobs. Yeah. I, I will say this, by the way, you know, a lot of people mis, will misinterpret that comment. Steven Sanofsky was much more intelligent than Steve Jobs, much more. He was, had an engineering mindset. He was very process-driven. But Steven, uh, Steve Jobs had two things that Sanofsky doesn't have, actual vision and an understanding of what cons uh, consumers want, what people want. Yeah. And um, charisma, actual charisma. He was a, a jerk. They're both jerks. But you, you, you know? wanted to, <laughs> but, I mean, you wanted to watch him. Yeah. You wanted to hear him. I mean, I don't that know was... anyone's ever watched a Sanofsky presentation and came away with like, oh, that was great. You know? <laughs> it was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> well, I like Balmer. I like Balmer when he yells and yeah. he does this a lot with his hands. I like Balmer, period. And, and for the past many years, you know, there's been a lot of people calling on him to step down or for them to overthrow him, whatever. You know what? He is a CEO. That guy's the yeah. CEO. He just is. Listen, I, I think because, you know, Bill Gates wasn't was there and he was the face of Microsoft. And but Bill Gates was was an engineer. Well, Bill, Bill Gates was also a businessman. I, yeah. I think, the, you know, the funny thing about well, Balmer, Gates, Balmer, what was his background prior to this? Uh, he, yeah, yeah, well, he was part of the business division. He's not really an engineer in it, of any sales, sort. He was a sales. Yeah. Um, yep. But I mean, I actually think that those qualities are more important for a CEO than being technical. You know, I think Bill Gates' strength as CEO had nothing to do with his tech qualifications. It had to do with his business acumen. And I think that's the thing people misunderstand. Like when people were saying Sanofsky would have been a great CEO, it's like, no, he wouldn't have been a great CEO. He was, he was good for doing what he did. You know, he wrote, he wrote, write it, I almost said wrote, he wrote the ship. He righted the ship, got it going in some direction. Yeah. And, you know, he was, he was very methodical, you know? And, and could, by the he way, he's done this every three years for the rest of his life. Balmer, no Balmer has been there as CEO for almost a decade or over a decade at this point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he, he had, I mean, he's had a decade to mold Microsoft and to change Microsoft's image. And I think he's done a, a phenomenal job at that. I don't think he was aggressive by any means into shifting Microsoft into what it is today. I think he, he, he understood that it's going to take time. And I think Xbox you know was a major thing. I think Windows, uh, Windows Phone is a, is a major part of this. It's it, it, it. This stuff is hard. I mean, a lot of people can look at the last decade at Microsoft and say, "Oh, squandered opportunity." The stock has gone nowhere. Blah blah blah. You know, there's all these arguments to make, but you know, ultimately, what happened to Microsoft was going to happen to Microsoft regardless. Steve uh, Bill Gates could have stayed in charge. It would have happened exactly as it happened. The, there's just stuff external to the company that you can't do anything about. It's mature. Its markets are mature. It's hard to take a company like that and turn it around. And I think the thing that's most interesting about what's going on right now. It's not, it's not just Windows. In fact, Windows is not really leading the way in many ways. It's Office and Server and Services and Azure and Xbox and, you know, it's all this other stuff and Windows too, of course, Windows Phone. You know, there's this notion that Microsoft is turning from what it used to be into something different. Yeah. You know, it realigned itself around devices and services. It's really doing that. That's crazy. It would have been so easy for Microsoft to have just kept making software. And they but would have been but, fine for a long time. Yeah, but it's necessary in order to evolve as a company. I mean, it, it, I, it, I hate bringing up IBM, but you look at IBM. Right. Super successful, literally the most boring company on earth. Yeah. And, and they weren't. Right. No, I, I actually, there was a while there where I thought to myself, this is how it's going to go. Microsoft, you know, people talk about Microsoft being irrelevant. They're never going to be irrelevant. But like life insurance isn't irrelevant. Yeah. And, you know, going food shopping every week isn't irrelevant. It's just not interesting. It's like something we all have to deal with, but who cares? I mean, I'm a tech enthusiast, ultimately. I care, I care about how tech impacts our lives on a daily basis. You know, 
if Microsoft was just there like electricity or like, you know, life insurance or whatever, it wouldn't be interesting. Just yeah. like IBM is not interesting. Um, th- that they have turned that around is really one of the more amazing things that's occurred this past decade. It's, it's, cra- it's incredible. You know, people look at their move to the Internet and they say, oh, look at that. They made this crazy move. What they're doing now makes the move to the Internet look like the joke that it was. It was a very straightforward process. Uh, adapting the, you know, ad- or adopting the internet, or however you want to say it, what they're doing now is humongous. It's as big as Apple's move away from traditional PCs into devices and entertainment. I want to go to uh, Windows Phone a little bit. Uh, it launched on Friday with uh, some of their products. Uh, on, yeah, oh, on, yeah, on AT and T. On yeah. AT and T. Uh, have you gotten any news on how that's gone? Uh, what are people yeah. thinking? Well, like everything else, it's hard to say. There's not a lot of talking over there. By the way, you just. Uh, um, <laughs> kind of put all this in perspective. I hope that one of the things that comes out of this is more transparency. Remember we talked about how Microsoft used to be super transparent and now they're not transparent yeah. at all? snofsky has gone. I'm not saying go back to the way it was. I'm definitely not saying that. But you know what? How about some middle ground? And so one of the ways you could be transparent is saying, hey, by the way, this is how many we sold. You know, Windows is come and gone. I've heard nothing past that initial figure. Windows Phone, Nothing. And so what we've heard from stores is, well, a lot of them are actually sold out, you know, around the country. But how many did they get? Three, ten, That's eight? the thing. How you many? Know, but I'll I, tell I, you, Paul, there are people that I know that would have never bought this device, but they are now using a Windows phone. I can tell you five people that have bought a Windows phone. I couldn't tell you how many people bought Windows phone. I, I probably zero sure. with Windows phone seven. Obviously, we're swinging against the tide here. You know, there is no doubt that even in our most fantastical, <laughs> you know, uh, possible alternate future that Windows Phone is not going to be number one or two. I mean, it's, you know, number three. So uh, we'll see what that looks like. But um, it's so awesome. I love Windows Phone. I am, I, I am unabashedly a fan of Windows Phone. I love it. I love it so much more than I love most things. I... I care more about Windows Phone 8 or Windows Phone in general than I do about Windows at this point. I really do. Um, and I think part of it is simply because it's that much more personal thing. It is that companion that's with you at all time. It's the thing you rely on when you go. You know, it's, it's awesome to me. I went into uh, actually Boston to do that passport control stuff, and I wanted to find out what was the best way to go home. And you don't even think about this stuff. Or last night I was driving to Best Buy with my son at midnight like an idiot because the one in Dedham wasn't open. And so I had, I had him bring up the map on the phone and direct me to the next closest Best Buy in the dark, in the cold. And I'm thinking, I actually had this moment where I thought to myself, how awesome is this? Yeah. A couple of years ago, not too long ago, Mark would have been home in bed. I would have been out on my own doing this kind of thing. And now I'm in the car with my son and he's using this phone that didn't even exist a couple of years ago. And we're doing this technology thing that the day that he was born, I could not have even imagined, you know? And that's the kind of personal thing you got going on with Windows Phone or with any handset, right? That you just will never have with a... Well, a it, it's, 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 kind just, of, it's kind of streamlined all these things into its, its operating system. And this is something that we discussed in the past where you've needed all these apps to do this one simple thing. Yeah. Now you don't need to because it's integrated in the software. Sure. Uh, and and listen, they still have a long way to go. But I mean, with my phone, I'll give you an example. With uh, with the Nexus, when I'm at the train stop, it tells me without me looking at what the schedule is. It'll tell me, hey, the next train is coming at you know two forty two. Yeah. From two Penn Station, it knows. <laughs> Which, by the way, is something the Boston T couldn't tell you if its life depended on it. We're still <laughs> working on this. 1970s switch system that probably defies any technology. But I mean, it's amazing. And yeah. every time I was by when when I came into the city for the uh, for the event, every time I, I was by a bus stop, it would tell me, "Hey, this is the bus route. This is where it's going. This is the next time it's coming." It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. And you know, I don't go out too much, but I, I was blown away how great this was. And I didn't need an an individual app. And I'm sure I'm going to get a bunch of uh, people to say, you know, you could do that on an iPhone with the uh, find my find my train app. Yeah, but sometimes you don't want to open up an application. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to, I don't know, just look at your phone and it'll say, hey, the train is here. I, I, seriously, that is a, a point of maturity that everyone is going to arrive at eventually. Trust me. Uh, this silliness of people with their faces stuck in phones when they're sitting at a table together and walking down the street. It's, it's, there'll always be some of that. 
But I, I really do feel like there's a maturing process we all have to go through with these devices. There is, and, and things are shifting. Uh, I, I added a story here and um, that for the first time ever, SMS is declining. People aren't doing SMS messaging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it makes a lot of sense to me <laughs> yeah, that but, we're no I, longer not, doing this. I'm not going to say who this is because I'm not. I don't want to embarrass him. But I, I have a friend that refuses to pay for a texting plan for some reason, and he doesn't want people to text him. It drives me crazy because this is just the accepted way that people communicate. Like to me, this is just ludicrous. And um, I seeing him recently. We this topic comes up as it does, and I said, so I said, hold on a second. Can you get text on your phone? And he says, yeah. And he says, so. How, does it cost? I mean, I don't understand. You're not paying for texting. What does it mean? And so he says, it costs five cents per text. And I said, good. Here's $2. I'm texting you. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have got to be kidding me. But he, you know? d- but he, I'm sure he doesn't have internet on his phone either. I don't know what he yeah. has. I just, it was just one of those silly things. Like, I, texting is so, it's so perfect. It's the type of thing, like, I can be at my son's uh, foot, uh, basketball game. My wife is at my daughter's basketball game. We're in different parts of town. She can text me and say the score is this or uh, the game's over. We're heading over there now or the game's over. Should we go there? Is there enough time? And, you know, and it's like simple. It's the type of thing where you don't necessarily have to talk on the phone. And that is actually ponderous or not possible. Whereas texting is more appropriate for that. Well, you know what I do now? Um when I need to text my wife, I don't text her anymore. I actually send it through iMessage from you, from the Mac. You sicken me. But it's made my life so much easier. <laughs> At what cost, Andrew? Uh, my my soul, my pride, my dignity. <laughs> I'm using iMessage to text. But you know what people are doing now, and I find this amazing? I get messages from people all the time on Facebook yeah. from their phone. Yes. They'll Facebook message me rather than sending me a text. Right. And by the way, Skype would kind of work similarly. But the thing that's weird to me about Facebook is that that thing is now integrated into so many things that I have that I will get Facebook messages through Windows Live Messenger. I'll get them, obviously, in the web interface. I'll get them on my phone. Uh, You you get them in the phone on the Facebook app, but also in Windows Phone through the messaging app. And it's, uh, it's weird because like the same message... They've almost always done, I think, I don't, I imagine how they've done this. They could have done it in Skype, right? Because Skype integrates with Facebook. Um, I don't know where they were when they sent it, but I get it on everything. Like it shows up in, you know, like seven different locations. Yeah, see, I, I got the same problem because my, um, everything is now connected. So my iPad, my my phone, my laptop, uh, my Nexus tablet. So when I get like an email, it'll be, it'll ring on all 500 of my devices, Right. That's my, my office throughout the day is a, a little cacophony of uh, notification sounds. By the way, I just messaged Paul on Facebook <laughs> saying, hello, I love Apple. And he wrote back, damn you. And by the way, I saw it in Windows Live Messenger. And you know where I saw it? In iMessage. iMessage, you bastard. I know exactly where you saw it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's insane, but... You know, there has to be some sort of standard, and this is what BlackBerry was doing yeah. so well with, with uh, BBM, with BlackBerry Messenger, and people well, but, would get Blackberries just for the Messenger feature. Yeah. And I, I like the notion of open. I, I think open is better. You know, Open is better, but there um, hasn't been an option. I mean, I know there was one application called Kick. They were trying yeah, to do no, no. it, and there's a couple other... other Tango, you know, and Tango. there's all these different things. But, but nobody's been able to, to kind of yeah. be successful at this, other than Facebook, really. Facebook is really going to be the IP, yeah, IP message. Kind of, it's like a cockroach. you know. It's everywhere. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing to me. Um, so Windows Phone 8, I think I'm picking one up. Okay. Uh, when, what is the release date for the HTC devices on Verizon? I thought it was... Let's see. Tomorrow is T-Mobile... I think the only I don't think we have a date. I think they've just said by Thanksgiving. Okay, so let's say so the twenty twenty eighth. Just somebody maybe uh, maybe someone's listening that knows when does Verizon typically release new phones? So they have a, a day of the week that they do that. You know, they did this with the Droid. It was after Thanksgiving, and I want to say the twenty eighth. No, no, I meant like day of the week. Tuesday, I, mean, because, I believe. Uh, Tuesday. If I'm not mistaken, so let's look at the calendar. Uh, so the twenty sixth. The Thanksgiving is a week from this Thursday, isn't it? Wow. It's the 22nd. Yeah. So there's not a lot of time left if they're going to make that date. No. 
Thanksgiving is over. Yes, I am. For a, Thanksgiving Canadians. could be over. I am a little bit out. Yes, yes. No, no. For Canadians, it's over. Oh, it's over for the. Yeah, okay. But nobody. <laughs> yeah, it's Canadian yeah, it's, Thanksgiving. It's cute. You think you can have your it's own. It's cold. Holidays. Cold turkey. Okay. <laughs> That's all you eat. <laughs> Oh my! What so I mean, I'm excited to get it. Uh, I'll probably go pick it up on the release date. I'll go wait online. I'm, I'm assuming there's so, going to be a huge line there. Do this. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Supposedly what kind of they're shipping today. But be sure to spend time with each of the devices because um, I don't remember the model number. But Verizon will have like a Nokia eight. What is it? Twenty five or something like that, which is a variant of this eight twenty that I have here, which is actually a really nice phone. Um, the, and A22, yeah, that sounds about right. Or uh, obviously they have the 8, 8X, which is beautiful. I think you're, you're going to love that. The comparison stuff. that I've seen, uh, I don't know why they're doing this. They're comparing the HTC 8X to the Lumia 822. Yeah. Are they competing in any way? I would imagine that the 8X is really competing with the, the 920. It isn't. It isn't. You know, it's funny because the from a profile perspective, the 8X is in many ways closer to the 822. Okay. You know? Um, they both have eight megapixel cameras. The cameras are very, very similar, assuming the A22 has the exact same camera as the A20, which I assume it does. Um, the difference is that the 8X has an HD display. The A22 is going to have the 800 by 480, which, by the way, still looks great. I, I fully expected to have this moment where I finally got a, an HD Windows phone, and then I looked at the other phones and said, okay, I get it now. You know, HD, it looks so much. You know, the truth is the 8, 800 by 480 looks great in Windows Phone. It just does. Uh, you know, you can compare it yourself. Go into a store. I mean, um, I think it looks fantastic. So, so they're you know, shipping that, today. Shipping today. What does that mean, though? I'm can trying you go to a store. Uh, well, this is actually cool. 199 with a two year contract, two, 549 retail. Yeah, for the 8X. For the 8X. How much storage is on that? Uh, I'm not too sure. That's exp it's expensive. I mean, the I, th I think that's expensive, isn't it? Less at AT and T. I don't know. Well, this is for Verizon. Let me see on the Verizon yeah. website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's anything, VerizonWireless.com. Because uh, I'll probably go pick this up tomorrow if they have it. I think the Verizon version supports uh, wireless charging. Although you would need a compatible. Why does it need to know my location? I know. I mean, like, what difference is it going to make? Yeah. Okay, so it's all about Droid, obviously. Windows Phone, 8X. Uh, we will ship on the 21st. That's what Verizon is saying right now. The 21st? Yeah. So it's next Wednesday, maybe. Yeah, Verizon is saying we will ship on the 21st. It's, uh, well, it's the red model. I don't know if they're giving you another option for a different color. Literally. Let's click on blue. Like blue is... I wonder if the blue is shipping now. Interesting. We'll ship on the 19th for the blue one. Why would they do that? They've really, and shipping on the 15th for the black one. So they've split the ship date on, depending on the color of the phone. That, that baffles me. <laughs> really does. It's amazing. Hey, you know what? At least they're doing it, right? At least they have it, yeah. Yeah. It could have been a lot worse. Do, how do you, uh, do you, if you were to predict, do you think this is going to be successful on Verizon, considering Verizon is pushing Droid yeah. left and right? I mean, not even the iPhone? I mean, I'm on their website now. I go to smartphone. Yeah, and it's I, I all. Can't, I can't say. I, I, it's. I've always felt like Windows Phone should have been more successful than it was. I still feel that way. I hope that it will be, but it's just impossible to to know. You know, I there's a kind of inertia that takes over. I think with these phones, you know, where Android and iOS are just entrenched and they own between them like ninety something percent of the market. I mean, it's. You know, huge success for Windows Phone 8 would be high single-digit market share. You know, I mean, imagine if they ever hit 10%. That would be crazy. I mean, that'd be, uh, that'd be phenomenal for them. But yeah, is that it, a realistic number for them? I, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. Not short term. We'll see. I, I would love to be wrong on this. This is one of those areas where I just, I wish it was better. And I'd be so happy to accept it. I have a hard time seeing it happen. But... I would love for that to happen, sure. So why don't you talk about Call of Duty a little bit? Because you wait online. I know <laughs> yeah, you waited. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have you been playing it all day? What, how do you like yeah. uh, Black Ops 2? Uh, I played it all night. Um, I've been playing a little bit here and there today. It's a little hard, obviously. I've got work to do and um, you know, life goes on. But it looks great, I have to say. So uh, Halo 4 came out a, a week ago. 
Halo 4 is beautiful looking in ways that I didn't think were possible, right? That I thought we had reached the end for the Xbox 360 from a graphical standpoint. I would have assumed the same too. And then you see Halo 4 and you're like, wow, this is beautiful. And oddly enough, Call of Duty, you think this is the next Black Ops, it's the next Call of Duty. You could go back to, you know, through World at War and the original Modern Warfare and think of these uh, group, this as a group of games that are kind of the same family, same, you assume they have the same, um, you know, game engine or whatever. And yet, in the same way that Halo 4 is amazing looking, unexpectedly, so is this game. It's got a, it's got a, I don't know what to call it. it it's, it's just a, a different look. It's nice. And uh, so there's that. That was surprising to me. Hey, I um, mean, Halo 4 sold, uh, I believe, twenty two $220 million worth of sales yeah. the first day. Well, I, I added to the show notes. So a year ago, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 made $400 million in one day. Wow, okay. So that's good for Halo. That's but good for Halo. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a bigger <laughs> mark out there. So whether or not Black Ops 2 can reach that, I don't know. Do you, think, I, it, do you think it's going to come close? I think it will beat Halo 4, definitely. Um, this is, you know, I, I've only played the single player a bit. I'm, I'm only maybe on the second level or whatever. I've done a lot of the online stuff. Um, online is, in, you know, is better and, and also more complicated. And again, I, I have the same experience where I, I look at this game and I think to myself, man, if you haven't been following along, I don't know how you'd be able to play this game. See, and that's so my problem. And, and we've spoken about this all the time. I, I've yeah. fallen so far behind where uh, it's nearly uh, impossible I, for me to listen, pick up. I have Call of Duty uh, Black Ops, and I can't yeah. play it. I have been playing these games steadily for years. And I look at the UI for this thing and all the options you can do. They've completely changed the way you can do loadouts. Now you basically can hold, I think it's like 10 items, and you can kind of mix and match them in ways that are different than was the case in previous games and all that kind of stuff. But... It is, oh my God, is it complex? You know, it, it's amazing how much stuff there is. And it's one of those things where, you know, as you play and you gain experience, you, you open up the ability to have new stuff. And the way it's called out is not as obvious, maybe, as it used to be. It, it, you really have to know what you're doing. It, it's kind of yeah. surprising. The, the single player campaign is very straightforward. I, I think the big change there is that for the first time in a Call of Duty game, and this is one of those you can't go back moments, it's not like a rail shooter anymore, like where you kind of have this predefined goal every time. Like you can actually make decisions that could take the game in a slightly different direction, which is, you know, I know it sounds like pretty basic AI type stuff, but it's it's really the first time that Call of Duty's ever gone in that direction. So, you know, between the graphics and the crazy improvements in multiplayer and then this first ever for Call of Duty type of um, more nuanced single player. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty serious update. Um, but this, and, I'm assuming this is it. I mean, for the Xbox franchise, this is probably the highest quality game that you'll be able to get for the Xbox 360. Yeah, I, I've over. said that before about previous yeah. games. But yeah, I look at again. I'm I'm really kind of between this and Halo 4, which by the way, Halo 4 just bores the heck out of me. I um, every Halo game I've played through to completion on single player at least once. Um, many of them more than once. I'm one of those rare people that really likes the single player much more than multiplayer for those games. I've I played it a couple. I played uh, the older Halos, and every time I put that he headset on, it's just a haven for racism with like eight year olds. Yeah, yeah. I I I don't deal with that. I too. mean, but the but as far as the single player goes, it's one of the. It's weird. I feel bad about it. It's beautiful. I mean, beautiful. It really is just a great looking game. I just don't care. You know, like I yeah. just don't care. And even, I have to say, even Black Ops 2, I've always been I, usually single player first, then multiplayer. But what, one, what's the disconnect for you with Halo? Why, why, why aren't you? It's not Call of Duty, for one thing. Yeah. You know, there's like minor button control differences that aren't a big deal, but they do, those are frustrating. Is and it the helmets? It's just the whole, I don't know if it's the sci fi thing. Like once you've actually used what appear to be very realistic weapons, going to like a thing that shoots, you know, purple spike you know, crystal things is like, eh, it's just, it's just yeah. not, I don't know. I don't know. I, it, it's hard. To, I know. Look, people love this. I'm going to go buy the Wii U and I'm going to play yeah. Mario. Please. Do. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play what four year olds play. And I'm fine with that. Teaches makes, them. makes me really happy. <laughs> it's just simple. It makes me sad that that makes you happy, but oh, it'll make me so happy. I'm telling you, Paul, I'm going to get Mario. I'm going to play Zelda. I'm going to walk around in circles, killing 
mushroom people. I think they're called well, yeah, Goombas. That, the iMessage thing is starting to make sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to talk to you about your website. You did a uh, an update. When yeah, Super is updated. I did not do it personally, but yes. People fine. did. Um, yeah. Uh, it yeah, looks this great. Is, this has been years in the making, and I never thought it was going to happen. I, uh, lots and lots of complaints about like a lack of a mobile site and commenting. I don't think people understood why I didn't have commenting. It's actually a very complex issue, but it was something I always wanted to have and just couldn't do. Um, and we, we had gone as a company down a, a, the wrong path technologically, for our web infrastructure, and it was I, I. I'm not kidding when I tell you I have spent the past two years complaining, 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 complaining. You know about the technology and uh, the people that were backing it and saying that this is the wrong path. And uh, they finally got off of it and went to this. And this thing is awesome. It looks yeah. great. Is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's super fast. Uh, really nice. Yeah, so I'm really, so happy. Really nice. I mean, it's not perfect. You know, we're going to get there. There's, there's some things missing. There's a lack of integration between, um, you know, the Windows IT Pro stuff and my stuff, and that, that will eventually get in there. So my news articles aren't popping up on my site yet. Um, there's some, what else is missing? Uh, um, I don't know. There's some other stuff. But, you know, we, we got mobile site, an awesome mobile site, which is great. Um, commenting is there, which is, you know, is great, but it's all, you know, <laughs> it's also very, uh, it's been very well received. So I spent a lot of time, I have to moderate comments because. Um, oh, I'm know, sure you're going to get, you're going to get so it would just many. Be accessible. It would be accessible otherwise. But, you know, the comments have been very respectful, but more to the point on topic. And uh, people are, you know, you know, are communicating to each other, which is all, seriously what I always wanted. You know, I go back in years and years and years. I always think of this stuff as like a conversation, like you and I are having a conversation about yeah. technology. Um, the website should be like that. And now with the comment section, it can be like that. And um, so that's great. Very cool. Very, very cool. Makes my site look dated. I think I need to do my site now. Yeah, your site is a joke. I uh, it really, I absolutely hate my site. I'll <laughs> tell you. And I'm the first one to say it. I, it, it's been like this for three years and I'm afraid to touch anything at this point. If I touch it, I'm afraid I'm going to break something. There's so much <laughs> customization to get, get this uh, working. Well, by the way, that's the other thing. Not that anyone sees this, but on my site, you know, uh, entering stuff into like the web forums to like, post articles was a disaster. And this thing, oh God, it's so wonderful. And it, it enables me to publish in a much more seamless and quick fashion than I was able to ever do before. And um, it's like I've been unleashed, you know? And so I think you're going to see the, the, the volume will ramp up and it will enable me to, I, I don't have like separate stuff. It's not like blog posts are separate from articles. It's just all... Whatever. So I can write something short. I can write something long. It doesn't matter. I can just get it in there. It's, it's great. So it's good. Yes, sir. All right. Time to wrap <laughs> it up. I know you uh, got to get out of here. I know you want to play uh, Call of Duty a little bit before. You're doing some tweet-a-thon? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. So Peter Bright and I and some other guys are going to be doing kind of a Windows 8 Q&A yeah. later on Twitter. Uh, for I believe it's for HP and Microsoft. I'm, I, I sort of agreed to do it. I don't even... <laughs> I should probably pay more attention to that. But I believe it was a credible group of people who asked me to do it. Um, so, yeah. Can I ask you questions? Will you reply to me? I will. Can I ask you Apple questions? <laughs> yeah, uh, you can. Can. I, can I ask you what shirt goes with my, my wife's iPhone 5? <laughs> yes, it would be the frilly white shirt. Oh, very nice. By the way, I, she got that job. Shirt. She got the job. Oh, she did. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So uh, the job that we thought she went missing at and that she was killed and kidnapped uh, right, she got the job. So that's but did good. she? Did she find out about the woman you had spent the night with? Because that was, I think, embarrassing to all of us. No, they're best friends. They they had a whole tweet back and forth. Uh, she's the skinny pig NYC on Twitter, <laughs> and yes, that's a that's her blog. She's a sure. food blogger, and we were all going back and forth, and it was hysterical. And I think you were in that too. So somehow, Therat, the skinny pig, Jessica Zarian, and Andrew Zarian were in this love triangle on Twitter. Yeah. It was very. It was I'm a just, lot of I'm just happy happy to be thought of. So. Yeah. But uh, I get it all the time, so it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> you're not his wife. I, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm dying to find out who it was. If you're listening, tell me I just who you love are. How, like the worst is thought of you immediately. It couldn't have been like my sister, my yep. cousin, exactly. a coworker. Who knows? It could have been. It could have been someone I met at the event, and they were asking me about about podcasting. Who knows? No, yeah. I'm automatically having an affair with some harlot from New York City. 
All right, guys. Yep. Uh, if you missed any portion of the shows, obviously we started uh, two hours early today, but uh, we had to for uh, Paul's schedule because you know he changes the schedule and he's a big shot now. Yeah, I, no, actually, right. And sorry about that. No, anytime. <laughs> so, Listen, I'm not yeah, doing anything. I uh, I do this to you a lot because I don't pay attention and I'm overworked. You know. Not because it's I'm fine. malicious and no, no, let's, I appreciate. Let's see, it let's see how much Andrew can put up with. Absolutely not. No, I don't see it that way at all. I, I actually, I like this time. So maybe if this is something you'd like to do, we can maybe move it up to two o'clock. Actually, um, that would uh, Tuesday is pretty much open, generally speaking. So that would be fine with. Actually, me. that might be better because uh, five. I know when we do it at four, you got to be out by like five thirty. Yeah, the problem is on Tuesdays, um, at least once a month. Yeah, we do an event, so. Sometimes I got to get out of there. Yeah, so maybe, I mean, you know what? I'll put it on Twitter. Um, okay. I'll, I'll ask a question on Twitter if, the, if there are people want us to move it up early. <laughs> so, uh, there's another show that goes on at this time. I forgot. People are upset at that. Uh, I don't know. Well, I'll put it out there and we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, but you can follow Paul on Twitter, at The Rot. I'm at Andrew Zarian on Twitter. My wife is at Jessica Zarian. You could message her and tell her that I'm not having an affair with the, uh, the blonde that night. Just to validate it. Was she uh, blonde? Uh, dirty blonde. She always was a blonde. I, I told her I don't like this whole brunette thing. It's screwing me up. My girlfriend should be a blonde. My wife should be a brunette. Right. That's how I like to keep things. Uh, <laughs> you go to winsupersite.com uh, for all things Paul Therati. He just updated the site. It looks amazing. Uh, I saw it and I was very surprised by when I saw the site. I was like, wow, he changed the site. Look at that. Looks great. Uh, you could also go to our website, gfknetwork.com. If you miss any portion of the show, you can subscribe to us. We're on iTunes. We're on uh, Windows Phone. You can subscribe to us on uh, Windows Phone. I was going to say Zoom, but I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, and anywhere else podcasts are available, you can subscribe to us. And uh, that's it for this week, guys. Uh, send us your emails if you want to comment on anything that we discuss. Obviously, we didn't do our um, 10 years in the future game or the what if game this week, uh, but we're going to do it next week. So uh, send in your questions, comments, and uh, hopefully, and, and I'll hopefully answers you. Uh, we'll see you all next week on What the Tech. Good night, everybody.